In the past three weeks, I have received enormous amounts of comments about V-Ray and virtual staging. Well, today in this video, I have recorded for you, step by step, how you can virtually stage with V-Ray 5 and 3ds Max. Stay tuned, it's gonna be awesome. For the today's video, I have opened my 3ds Max scene where I've used for my six rules of virtual staging. And if you haven't watched this video, make sure you watch it, link is down in the comment or at the end of this video. And be sure to subscribe because this channel is all about 3ds Max, virtual staging and home staging in general. And now you see my Corona rendering with the same scene and I'm demonstrating you how this is was working and still working great. But now I will switch to V-Ray 5 and convert all of the materials within that scene and gradually, slowly, step by step, I'll start showing you how you can create virtual staging. One of the first steps after converting to V-Ray 5 is to lower down the resolution to more manageable size. And as you can see, I've started IPR to check if some of the materials are okay and which are not okay. And as you can see, the shadow catcher material is gone. My next step is to make sure my lights cast shadows because after the conversion, V-Ray disables the, the shadows uh, from all the lights. I don't know why, but it does it all, all the times. In my next step, I'm going to remove all of the materials and I'll leave only my background image. As you can see, the, the shadow catcher material from Corona does not work with V-Ray. So for that purpose, we have to completely rebuild our material structure. And first, I will start by making a copy of my bitmap. And obviously, it should not be Corona bitmap or V-Ray bitmap, but a standard bitmap. This is crucial, guys. Make sure to remember that. As soon as I re-import my photo, I'm going to set the environment coordinates to screen. This is important step, make sure you remember it. The next step is to create a standard scanline material. The next part of the puzzle is V-Ray material wrapper. And now you have to plug the standard material into the base material of the V-Ray wrapper. Then apply the V-Ray wrapper to your shadow catching object, which is in this case my room. And now test with the IPR if we have some progress. And yes, we have progress. It is not right, but we see something. We are not lost. Attention, now activate made surface and make alpha contribution to minus one. Shadows affect alpha are on and all the acoustics should be off. When you finish with the V-Ray material wrapper settings, the next step is to add the background inside the V-Ray frame buffer. Click on the plus sign and find the background. Then find your background photo and apply it again. Voila! You have a virtual stage image. <laughs> I'm kidding you. There's no shadows yet. We have to make sure we have shadows. And this is the next crucial step. And now something a little bit more technical, but this is, trust me, this is important part. And because I don't want to create this video so long, I will add this explanation as a text right now on the screen and you can pause, read it. And as soon as you're ready, we can continue. Briefly, what you should remember is to always set the alpha contribution to minus one and at your preference, you can turn on or turn off the effect alpha. And this next step is where the difference between virtual staging with Corona and V-Ray is very, very different. You don't need an environment map. So I'm going to remove my environment map. So because I don't need it. And the next step, I'm going to activate the GRI environment, reflection, reflection environment, and secondary matte environment. 
Those can be found under the drop-down called Environment inside the render setup. By pasting our environment map inside the slots, this will allow us to cast additional colors and light into our scene, which will make it more realistic. If you don't paste the environment map in those slots, you can achieve this with external lights and don't light, but you have to be very precise. And in the next step, I'm going to select my room object, click the right mouse button and select V-Ray properties. This will give you access to matte properties, which can be found and activated by simply pressing the icon inside the V-Ray toolbar. As soon as I click this, I already have my shadows. And now let me wrap up and explain what we did. Basically, the V-Ray wrapper is the same as the shadow catcher material in Corona. With the main difference, we don't have to add our map into the V-Ray wrapper, but instead just a gray standard material. And something very, very important. If you find your shadows being too dark, you can increase the brightness of the shadows by adjusting the number inside the material wrapper called Receive GI. By setting this number to higher than one, you will make your shadows more brighter. But please do remember that the higher the number is, the more noise you have in your image, which will lead your render times to be longer and it might cause you additional problems later. And now, as I'm ready, I'm going to set up my render elements. As in Corona rendering, your render elements can be found under the render elements dialog box inside the V-Ray render setup. For virtual staging, you don't need anything more than refraction, refraction, and V-Ray crypto mod. My next step is to render this at high resolution and set up the rendering mode to buckets. If you have found this video helpful, make sure to watch my other video right now on the screen or link down the comments called 6 rules of virtual staging. You will see me there how I explain to you the 6 rules of the virtual staging and how I stage exactly the same room but with Corona.